Yes? Oh, Mrs. 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 Peterson, come on in. No, is your friend Boston Blackie with you? Oh, no, no, he's not. Oh, well, then I, I I want you to come over to my apartment right away. Please, right away. Why, what's the matter? You know what the matter is. I've tried to tell you a dozen times. My husband's going to kill me. Oh, now, Mrs. Peterson, you Please know that. Please come over to my apartment. My husband made a phone call a minute ago, but Frank was out. But Frank's going to call back any minute. Frank? Who's Frank? My lawyer. Oh. Please, Miss Wesley, you have to come over. Maybe this phone call will prove to you that my husband's going to kill me. You've got to come and you've got to help me. Well, all right, I'll come over with you. Come on, hurry up. Frank may call back any minute. Here's my apartment and up the door locked. Now, Mrs. Shh, Peters, shh, shh. if you keep this up, you're going to have a nervous breakdown. Now, where's your husband? He's in there in the study, the room with the closed door. He's just waiting for that call. He's going to make plans to kill me. You'll see. Now, look, Mrs. Peterson, let's talk to your husband. Let, oh, let's get this over. Foolish, Miss Wesley. There's no use talking to him. He'll deny everything. Why can't you believe me? Why can't... Well, it's the call now. We can listen on the extension. You listen, Miss Wesley. Well, all right, but I think this is oh. silly. John? Oh, yes, Frank. I had a message that you called. What is it you want? I want to know a couple of things about my wife's life insurance policy. Uh-huh. Frank, is it all paid up to date? Oh, sure it is. You took care of that years ago. And I'm the sole beneficiary? Yes, yeah, Sure. Well, uh, Frank, what happens in the event my wife is murdered? Uh, do I, uh, do I still get the hundred thousand? Sure, you do, John. Unless the police prove that you murdered her. Oh, I don't think the police will be able to prove anything like that. Oh? No. No, I don't think they'll ever prove that. <laughs> And now, meet Dick Calmer as Boston Blackie. Enemy to those who make him an enemy. Friend to those who have no friend. And Mary. Yes? You say you heard Mr. Peterson actually ask Mrs. Peterson's lawyer who would benefit from his wife's insurance policy in the event she was murdered? Yes, Blackie, in exactly those words. Mrs. Right. Peterson. Yes? If you've known for a long time your husband planned to kill you, why didn't you go to the police? Oh, because that wouldn't have done any good. He would have denied everything, and then when the police let him go, he'd have killed me anyway. <laughs> what am I going to do? Well, I told her to go to the police a month ago, Blackie, when she first told me she was afraid of her husband. You knew this a month ago, Mary, and you didn't tell me? Well, I didn't take it seriously, Blackie. This is... Well, not until I heard that phone conversation. Well, it's a lucky thing you did. Lucky? It wasn't luck, Blackie. I knew Frank was going to return my husband's call, so I went over and got Miss Wesley. Uh, Mrs. Peterson lives in the apartment across the hall. Oh, I see. Uh, Mrs. Peterson, why would your husband want to kill you? Well, I don't know, unless... Unless... Unless what? Well, Blackie, you see, I'm a, a great deal older than my husband. Twenty years older, to be exact. He's probably attracted to some younger woman. When we were first married, he was so kind and generous... Now he scarcely ever gives me any money, even though he's extremely wealthy. Has he ever told you he wanted to leave you or get rid of you? Uh, no. But he's very angry every time I ask him for money. And several times he became so angry, he threatened to kill me. And now he's taking definite steps to do this. <laughs> well, we're going to take a few steps ourselves. Right toward police headquarters. <laughs> Miss Morgan, this is Mr. Peterson. Oh, Mr. Peterson, I'm glad you phoned in. You've had a lot of calls and all about the same thing. I know who called and why they called, Miss Morgan. Now, listen. Uh, yes, sir? Call everyone back, all of the companies we owe money to. Tell them very definitely that very shortly they will all be paid in full. <laughs> Inspector Faraday, you, you can arrest my husband for threatening to kill me. Well, I can have him locked up, Mrs. Peterson. Only this is a little out of my line. Oh. You see, this is the homicide department. 
Matt, I'd rather prevent a murder than have to solve one. You mean you'd rather prevent one than have me solve it, Farrah? Oh, you're such a genius. You even know what I mean, even though I don't say it. Well, I... Quiet, Blackie. You sent some of your men to find Mr. Peterson, Inspector Faraday. How long do you think it'll take? Well, they'll bring him in any minute, Miss Wesley. In here? Now, he couldn't possibly know we're looking for him. Unless he knows his wife went to Blackie and Blackie brought her to us. I doubt if he knows, Faraday. He doesn't know Mary overheard his conversation with Mrs. Peterson's lawyer. Inspector, can my husband really be sent to prison for threatening me? Of course. But we'll have to prove he's made plans and intends to carry them out. Well... But if what you say is... Come in! Here's John Peterson, Inspector Faraday. Thanks, Lawrence. Come on in, Peterson. What is this all about, anyhow? What's the idea of bringing... Hilda. I'll ask all here? the questions, Peterson. That's all, Lawrence. Wait outside. Yes, sir. This your husband, Mrs. Peterson? Hilda, what is this? What are you Mr. doing? Mr. Peterson, your wife charges that you're plotting to kill her. She says I'm going to kill her? Mm-hmm. Hilda, where did you ever get such an idea? Oh, you, you know very well where I got that idea. Just because I was angry at you a few times doesn't mean that I had... Mr. Peterson, you called your wife's lawyer and asked certain questions about your wife's life insurance policy, didn't you? Oh, yes, but I did... And you asked him what would happen if your wife were murdered, didn't you? Well, yeah, Yes, I did. And you but made you a remark that the police would never prove you killed her, didn't you? Well, I didn't mean exactly... Well, how, how do you know all about that? Never mind how we know. Inspector Faraday, he's admitting that he plans to kill me, isn't he? No. I'd say so, Mr. No, Peterson. No, wait a minute. Now, Lawrence. Look, oh, Lawrence. Look, wait a minute. Look here. Yes, Inspector? Take Peterson here out to the desk and book him for plotting the murder of his wife. Yes, sir. Come on, man. Will you let me explain? Will you let me tell you what I did mean? You're going to have plenty of chances to explain, Peterson. I'll be in to question him in a few minutes, Lawrence. Yes, sir. Come on, Mac. Like a nice boy. All right. But, Hilda, you're going to be sorry you started this. <laughs> Very sorry. Mac, I said, come on. Oh, thank you, Mr. Baxter. Thank you very much. Uh, don't thank me, Mrs. Peterson. Thank your husband. What he said in here proves what you say is true. Yes. Matt, I think your worries are over now. Maybe not, Faraday. You may not be able to make a case against Peterson hold up in court. Why not? What motive does Peterson have to kill his wife? That $100,000 insurance policy. But Peterson's a rich man, Faraday. Oh, he wants to kill me so he can marry another woman. A younger one. <laughs> but I still want him, and I want to live. Uh, do you know the woman? I, I've never seen her, but I know there is one. Well, I think we have to do two things more before Mrs. Peterson is safe. Find the other woman and cut Mr. Peterson off as beneficiary on an insurance policy. Let's do the second first. <laughs> Frank, I want you to change the beneficiary on my insurance policy. You can do that, can't you? Oh, sure, Hilda. But I think you're very silly. John isn't going to kill you. Those two people waiting out in your reception room think he is. Mary Wesley and Boston Blackie. Miss Wesley heard what John asked you on the phone this afternoon. And her friend Boston Blackie took me to the police to have John arrested. John's been arrested? Yes. And Inspector Faraday had him locked up. Frank, you can cut John off from my insurance money. Oh, Sure. You can change the beneficiary if you like. Well, I want it changed right now. Well, it can't be changed right now, Hilda. I'll have to contact the insurance company first. Oh. But I'll get to work on it first thing in the morning. Oh, well, John's in jail. I... Tomorrow will be time enough. Sure. Will you call me? Sure, sure. Well, I think you're being very foolish. Those questions John asked me about the policy this afternoon were perfectly normal questions. Normal? What's normal about asking what would happen if I were murdered? It might be explained. You see, there are some policies oh, that... Oh, I don't want to talk about it. I want to get it out of my mind. For the first time in weeks, I feel safe. That's because John's in jail. And as long as he's in jail, I'll, I'll feel safe. You say an Inspector Faraday is holding him? Yes, and I hope he holds him there forever. You'll phone me when, when you want me to sign the new policy, Frank? Yes, yeah, sure. Well, all right, I'll, I'll be at home then. Goodbye. Goodbye, Hilda. Hmm. Who wants to change? Department. Inspector Faraday's office, please. Just a minute. Faraday speaking. Inspector Faraday, my name is Frank Brandon. I'm an attorney. Yes. Is there a bond on John Peterson? Yes, he's being held under $25,000 bail. Well, I'll be right down. I'm posting his bond. Yeah? He doesn't belong in jail any more than you do. <laughs>
Thanks for bailing me out, Frank. I had to get you out of jail. Look, John, your wife's changing her insurance policy. You're not going to be her beneficiary much longer. I was afraid that would happen. It isn't already changed, is it? No, I can't get to the insurance company until tomorrow. You'll have to work fast. Don't worry. I've taken care of the most important detail already. I'll get that money yet. Mrs. Peterson, don't you want to come across the hall to my apartment for a while? Oh, no, thanks, Miss Westley. And, and thanks for taking me to dinner, Blackie. Don't mention it, Mrs. Peterson. Maybe you should spend the night at Mary's. Oh, no, Blackie. I'll be all right in my own place just as long as John's in jail. But thanks, Mr. Oh, here, let me open the door for you. No, no, thanks. I'm, I'm used to opening doors for myself. Now, are you sure you won't feel safer over in my apartment, Mrs. Peterson? Thank you. Just the same, Miss Wesley, but I, I'll be more comfortable here. All right. Dear, I can find that light switch. So wait, perhaps I can find oh, it. Oh, I found it. Thanks. Good night, Miss Wesley. Good night. Ah! Oh, oh, Mrs. Peterson. Mary, she's been shot. Oh, Blackie. I better call a doctor right away. No, Mary. Call a policeman. Huh? This woman's dead. And now, back to Boston Blackie. Hilda Peterson fears that her husband, John, is plotting to kill her. Boston Blackie's friend, Mary Wesley, overheard a phone conversation that corroborates Mrs. Peterson's feelings. With Blackie's aid, Mrs. Peterson has her husband arrested and then, at Blackie's suggestion, sees her lawyer to have her husband cut from all benefits from her $100,000 life insurance policy. The husband is later released on bail and his wife shot and killed, virtually in Blackie's presence. Blackie phones for Inspector Faraday and as we return to our story, Blackie and Mary inspect the murder scene, preparing for the inspector's arrival. Be careful not to touch anything, Mary, until Faraday gets here. All right, but let's have a look at the rifle that killed Mrs. Peterson. Well, what's keeping it up against the wall like that, Blackie? Well, it's these tiny wires here. Huh? They looped around the gun stock and the barrel of the rifle and then twisted around these picture hooks. Golly, the wire's so thin I could hardly see it, but I do now. The wire that's really hard to see is the one that runs from the trigger down to the light socket. Now, let me see something here. Hey, what are you doing, Blackie? I'm trying to sight down the barrel of the gun. Hmm. Uh-huh. The rifle is aimed at the spot about, uh, well, it's about a foot over the light switch on the other side of the room, and the trigger is wired to the light socket. When the light was switched on, the gun was fired. Mm, and poor Mrs. Peterson's head was just a little more than a foot higher than the switch on the wall. Let's go over and have a look at that light switch. Well, it's just an ordinary off-and-on switch, Blackie. That's right, but look at this. Hmm? What? This pencil mark on the wall, as if someone were measuring a person's height. Yeah. It's obvious how this was set up. It is? How obvious? Well, I'll show you. I'll turn off the lights so that the room will be dark the way it was when Mrs. Peterson walked in. Oh, gee, Blackie, I don't like being here in the dark. I'm going to turn the lights off. Mary, don't touch that switch! <laughs> Mary, you could have been killed. I think I am. Did you have to push me so hard, well, I had to push you fast. Bullets don't travel slow motion, you know. Open up! Open up in there! It's Faraday. The door's open, Inspector! What's going on? And it... It's all right, Faraday. The shot you just heard was an accident. An accident, huh? All right, what's it all about? It's about time you got here, Faraday. Now, now Inspector Faraday, don't go saying that Blackie did this. Uh, maybe I'll pin this on you, Miss Wesley. Oh. <laughs> you have trouble trying to pin on your badge. Uh, have a look around, boys. <laughs> okay. Well, Blackie, I guess you've smeared every fingerprint and removed every clue by this time, huh? No, everything just as it was when Mrs. Peterson was shot, Faraday. I imagine the gun rigged to the wall there is Peterson's. has the initials J.P. on the stock. Huh? Peterson could have set this trap before you arrested him. Or after he got out on bail, which was a couple of hours ago. Peterson's been out of jail for two hours? Mm -hmm. Then he could have rigged up this rifle gimmick. Could have? The bullet hit Mrs. Peterson in the head, didn't it? Yes. That means the rifle was aimed by someone familiar with the dead woman's height. Who'd know her height better than her husband? That's true. The rifle was rigged by someone familiar with this room and the position of the light switch. That would be Peterson. I agree. The rifle was rigged by someone who knew that Mrs. Peterson turned on the light the instant she walked in the door, instead of walking into the room and turning on a table lamp, the way some people do. That would be Peterson. It could be. It not only could be, it is. Why, this case is so tight against Peterson, a moron could get a conviction. Well, go to it, pal. You finally found a case you can handle. <laughs> Uh, 
Well, John, here we are, back at my office. And I'll tell you now that it's, now that it's over, I didn't think you'd be able to do it. I had to do it, Frank. It was the only way I could get my hands on that money. Sure, I know that. But, uh, well, do you think you're safe? Safe? Of course I am. Who's going to find out? I don't know. I was just asking, that's all. Come in. Well, well, I come to your lawyer's office to ask about you, Peterson. I find you instead. Oh, I'm getting lucky. I saw you in police headquarters. Who are you? I'm Boston Blackie. You're Peterson, so this must be Frank Brandon, right? Yes. You were here earlier today, weren't you? Mm Mm-hmm. But I waited outside with a friend of mine while you and Mrs. Peterson talked shop. Now I've come to talk shop, too. My shop being murder. Good heavens, man. You don't believe my wife's fantastic story, do you? I have to believe your wife's fantastic murder, Mr. Peterson. What does that mean? Is Hilda dead? Yes, Brandon. Shot through the head by a bullet from John Peterson's hunting rifle. Oh, no, I don't believe it. You're a good actor, Peterson. But you're a poor murderer. Your fingerprints were all over the murder gun. Well, well, why shouldn't they be? I I take it off the rack almost every night and look at it. It's one of my prized possessions. And you're a prized dope for going wife hunting with it. But I I didn't kill my wife. She was shot exactly 45 minutes ago. It couldn't have taken more than 10 minutes to rig that gun that killed her. Where were you about an hour ago? I'll tell you where I am. Don't be a fool. You stay out of this, Frank. As your lawyer, I'm advising you to keep quiet. I will not. I'm not telling you not to do it, John. You mustn't. Frank, think you have There's only one way to shut you up, so this is it. Don't. Come on, cut it out. Come on, break it up, will you? I'm going to tell you. Brandon, maybe this will teach you it's not polite to interrupt when someone is talking. Want more? No. All right, then. Just sit there like a good boy while Peterson puts the finish on that story he was telling me. Now, where were you an hour ago, Peterson? At a friend's home. At Charlie Everlane's. Oh, you have wealthy friends. Oh, Blackie, they're rich, but I'm not. I'm broke. I was borrowing money from Everlane with my wife's insurance as collateral. I had to work fast before the policy was changed. Everlane gave me 50000 which will just keep my business from going on the rocks. John, you're a fool to tell all this. Frank, you can go to jail for what you did. No wonder you wanted to keep him quiet, Brandon. Frank, I'd rather go to jail for swindle than for murder. And will I go to jail now? My wife's policy is still made out payable to me. So it is, but... But a man can't benefit from a crime that he committed, Peterson. I didn't kill my wife. Then why were you so interested in knowing whether or not the policy would pay off in the event your wife was murdered? But I wasn't interested. She was. She asked me to call Frank here and ask him all those questions, including what would happen if she were murdered. She asked you to phone, did she? Yes. And gave me a specific list of questions to ask. Well, obviously she was worried about being murdered, and obviously she was worried about being murdered by you. You still think I murdered her, do you? I know somebody close to her murdered her. And her husband is... Oh, no. Hey, where do you think you're going? I'm going out of here. You can't frame me. John, don't be stupid. I guarantee I can stop you. Let go of me. Oh, Blackie. Let go of you. Let go of me. Don't let me out of here. A few minutes are up. Come on, break it up there, both of you. Go. Who are you? I'm Faraday, police inspector. Come on, Peterson. Okay. Blackie asked for a few minutes alone in here. I waited outside a few minutes. Now you're coming with me. Oh. No, he isn't, Faraday. Why not? Because he didn't kill his wife. If you want to take someone to headquarters with you, you want to take Brandon here. I didn't kill Hilda. Why should he take me? So this one killed Mrs. Peterson, huh? Okay, Blackie, but you better be right. Come along, Brandon. But I tell you, I didn't quiet. kill her. I was with John Peterson at Charlie Eberlein's house when she was killed. I tell you, I don't... Thank you, Blackie. Thank you for taking my part. Just thank yourself, Peterson, for not being guilty. I'm amazed that you believe me so easily. I'm still more amazed to hear you say Frank killed her. I didn't say he killed a Peterson. What? All I said to Faraday was, if you want to take someone to headquarters, take Brandon. Yes, but then, then why did you let the inspector think that Frank is guilty? Why? Yes. <laughs> to keep the inspector busy while I go back to your apartment. I want to look over something I've overlooked. <laughs> Golly, Blackie, I've inspected every inch of this room so often, I think I know it by heart. I think I do too, Mary. You tired? I'm exhausted. Well, why don't you sit down for a while while I take another look around? All right. Oh, this big easy chair looks easy to take. Well, if I could only find some... What's the matter? Oh, I'm all right. I just sat on Mrs. Peterson's purse. Surprised me more than anything else, but... Gee, there is something hard in it. Maybe a gun. Let's look inside. Oh, you snoop. Hmm. The only thing in here is solid as a compact. I wonder if we'll find any papers or anything that will help me. Are you convinced that Mr. Peterson didn't kill his wife? I'm not convinced about anything right now, except that I haven't proved anything. Uh, <laughs> Here's Mrs. Peterson's driver's license. Yeah. Hilda Peterson, age 51, hair brown, eyes blue, weight 124, height 5 feet 5. Well, that's normal enough. See, wait a minute. 
How tall are you? Uh, five feet uh, two. Uh, come here a minute. Oh, and I was so comfortable. Well, this will just take a minute. Uh, come over here to the wall where the light switch is. All right. Let's see where that pencil mark is I saw last time I was here. Oh, yes, here it is. I suppose Mrs. Peterson let her killer back her up against the wall to measure her. Well, she was measured for murder somewhere or other. Uh, Mary, back up against the wall and stand up there straight, will okay. you? Okay. Yeah, uh, like this? You're five feet two? Uh-huh. Yeah. And then that pencil mark is just about two inches over your head. Oh, but, Blackie, I have high heels on. Well, they're fairly high. Well, take off your shoes and let... Holy mackerel, Mary, I've got it. Let's get to Faraday right away. I know why Mrs. Peterson was killed and also who killed her. <laughs> Faraday, we've come to the end of a lot of crazy cases in this office of yours, but this is the craziest yet. Well, I tell you, I'm going to go crazy if you seek me out of another innocent man. Brandon didn't kill Mrs. Peterson. I didn't say he did, Faraday. Mr. Peterson, may I ask you a question? Of course, Blackie. Did your wife know you were broke? No, she didn't. But she kept asking you for money, didn't she? Yes, and the only reason I didn't give it to her is because I didn't have it. But I didn't want her to know I didn't have it. I just didn't want her to worry. Well, she thought you had money, and that's why she wanted the police to think that you tried to kill her. But why? What could she gain? Yeah, that's a good question. Well, I think I have a good answer, Faraday. Mrs. Peterson thought her husband was rich. And she also thought she could railroad him into giving her as much money as she wanted. By claiming I tried to kill her? With proof. All she had to do was threaten to go to the police with evidence of the rifle and the bullet hole she thought was going to be in the wall. And you would have paid. I would have, if I'd had the money. She could have sent me to jail for years. Uh, for plenty of years. Yeah, but look, this isn't getting us anywhere. If Peterson here didn't kill his wife, who did? Faraday, I'm going to show you something very interesting now. Something that's going to make you very happy. Mm, what is it? Did you just buy yourself a one-way ticket to Siberia? Vanish the thought, pal. Are you ready, Mary? Mm -hmm. Just say the word. Well, the word is, take your shoes off and stand up against the wall over there. Uh -huh. Then take a pencil and draw a line on the wall to mark your height. Done. Oh, is the pencil level, Blackie? Yes, I think so. Hey, what is this? It's just a little demonstration, Faraday. There we are. See that pencil mark on the wall where Mary was just standing? Yeah, yeah I see it. Well, there's one just like it on the wall over the light switch where Mrs. Peterson was standing when she was shot. I know, I saw it. So what? So do you mind if I put a bullet hole in your wall? I'll say I mind, Blackie. Don't... Oh, no. gee, I'm sorry, Faraday. I didn't hear you in time. Now look at that nice clean hole that bullet made. Mary, are you putting your shoes back on? Yeah, yeah, Blackie. Blackie, do you realize you could have killed somebody? Well, do you realize I'm just about to show you how somebody was killed? See where that bullet hole is? Yes, I see where it is. In the wall. It's, uh, it's about an inch over the pencil line marking Miss Wesley's height. Isn't it, Blackie? Well, at least you notice it, Mr. Peterson. The bullet hit just where I aimed. About an inch over the line marking Mary's height. Uh, Blackie, I, I have my shoes on now. It's well, Mary. Now stand up against the wall again, will you? Huh? The same place you did before. Yeah. Blackie, if you're going to put more pencil marks and bullet holes... Hey, I can't even see the bullet hole now. Hey, Blackie, Mrs. Peterson was wearing high heels when she was killed. Now you're catching on fast, Inspector. And she was wearing flat heels when she measured herself against the wall and aimed that gun. Good heavens. You mean my wife killed herself? By accident, Peterson. Your wife was five feet five, wasn't she? Yes, she was. Well, that mark on the wall in your apartment is just a little over five feet five inches from the floor. And the gun was aimed to fire just one inch over that. But in high heels, Mrs. Peterson was well over five feet five inches tall, believe me. She was a good five feet eight. Yeah, well, Miss Wesley is a good five feet five in those shoes she's wearing. She'd be killed if you shot at that same mark now. Well, uh, let's not demonstrate to prove that point, Blackie. <laughs> Don't worry, we won't, Mary. Well, Faraday, are you satisfied? Uh, maybe. Uh, just one more point. Why did Mrs. Peterson plan to have herself shot at when she knew her husband was in jail? Well, that would clear him. Oh, she took care of that little detail by informing her lawyer, or rather, uh, informing her lawyer her husband was in jail. She knew the lawyer would get him out on bail right away, which is exactly what he did. <laughs> it's quite a plan that woman had up, Blackie. She didn't plan so well, Faraday. Look where she is now, in the cemetery. She started out with a plan and wound up with a plot. 